It's not going to be much longer before AMD's big reveal its Intel crushing 7 nanometer Zen 3 processors with my focus on what to expect for the top two Ryzen processors i.e. currently the 3900X and the 3950X new versions. Back in May I speculated that Zen 3 should see an IPC gain of at least 15% and possibly as high as 22%. We are still on track for at least 15% gains. I also speculated that we could see a jump in core counts, i.e. the 4950X jumping from 16 to as many as 24 cores. Unfortunately, that was just wishful thinking on my part, uh, since there has been nothing to suggest that there will even be a 20 core rising processor, let alone 24 core, so we can forget about core count increases. Also, it looks like AMD has learnt its lesson from its recently launched APU confusion with the G chips being 4000 series processors, despite being based on Zen 2 rather than Zen 3. So, it's probable that Zen 3 naming will be as 5000 series processors rather than 4000, which means, for instance, the supposedly 4950X will become a 5950X, which is what I have my eye on for my next system build, especially if it can be overclocked. So, in terms of expected clock speeds and core specs, the current 3900X is a 3.8 GHz base and 4.6 GHz boost processor. Well, I'll expect 200 MHz on top of these. So as I speculated in May becomes a 4 GHz base and 4.8 GHz boost. Whilst the 3950X is a 3.5 GHz base and 4.7 GHz boost. So the 5950X is likely to see an increase of 200 MHz and thus targets a 3.7 GHz base and 4.9 GHz boost processor which if it happens should mean 5 GHz should be achievable for the top end Ryzen processor and expect similar 200 MHz clock speed increases for the other processors in the 4000 or rather 5000 series. Another thing to look out for is how many cores and for how long will the boost of 4.9 GHz last. Of course, we all want it on all cores for some time, but unfortunately it looks like it may only be on a single core for just a few seconds, which of course depends on your cooling, i.e. better cooling means you've got a longer boost before it throttles. So it could prove to be a publicity stunt then, anything useful. Let's hope I'm wrong then, we get sustained boost on more than one core. The bottom line is that I continue to expect IPC gains of between 15% and 20% where clock speed increases will likely end Intel single core advantage in gaming unless Intel managed to put something out of the hat next year, hopefully Rocket Lake, it all remains to be seen but this year AMD is going to wipe the floor with Intel on a lease of 5000 series processors or 4000. I don't know. I think they're going to be 5000 series because 4000 is just confusing. And we'll find out pretty soon, probably in just over a month's time. So do remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos in this Intel vs AMD war series, which AMD is definitely winning at this point. Let's see if, what's it called, Rocket Lake, Tiger Lake, and 10 nanometers, what's it called, uh, Super Fin Fet, Super Fin. They keep changing the names Intel, but there, there is technology coming on the horizon that could give AMD a run for its money next year based on Super Fin technology. Remember, Intel have had more time and more resources to deploy R&D. So don't write Intel processors off yet. They're losing and losing badly and will continue to lose this year and probably next year. But don't write them off yet. It's not over until the fat Intel lady sings.
And again, do remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit the notification button, and give us a thumbs up as we wait for uh, the 5000 series processor, which will be the basis of my next computer build, the 5950X, if it delivers at least a 15% IPC increase otherwise I'm gonna go for a thread ripper yo know, I want to see at least 15% maybe 20% and you never know the 3960x no the next version the what would they call it 5960x what's that going to be like so it's not a done deal yet whether I go for 5950x depends but probably my next computer that will last several years will be based on the 5950X if it does what I expect it to do which is to crush Intel and basically be a process that will last a good five years of course being the top of the range you're not going to be able to upgrade to anything beyond whereas if you say if you get a 3600X or was it 5600X you could upgrade all the way to 5950x so the unlike that the thread rippers if I get a 5960x processor thread ripper then that gives me future scope to keep upgrading all the way to 5990x see so that's one of the negatives of getting the, the top of the range processor is that you haven't got any scope to upgrade on that platform so that's why even though I will probably go for a 5950X it's not a done deal because at the back of my mind is that I can't go any higher it's stuck unless the 6950X will run in a 5950X motherboard which I doubt will happen because what AMD has said this will be the last support for those types of motherboards unless the top end motherboard has the capacity for the BIOS to be flashed to allow the next generation of processor. Something we will discover on release of the 5950X. We will know that by then around that time whether the new motherboards well, the AMD will support the top end motherboard in the 6000 series processor or not. Anyway, we're going to get a lot of options in about a month's time. And I will probably just bite the bullet and go for a 5950X if they can produce the supply. That's another question. You know, you might have to wait four, five, six months before you can get your hands on the processor anyway. Yeah, we'll know soon enough, not long now. A couple of months, no, not even five weeks, I think. Around mid September, they should have released. Mid September, around 17th. In that time frame, we'll know how good the 5000 Zen 3 processors are. I'm sure most gamers will go for the 6 core, 12 thread, 50. 600x that'll probably be best suited for gamers especially if it's got clock speeds near 5 gigahertz that will rival Intel's whereas for productivity you'll go for the 8 core 12 core 5900x and the 16 core mega blaster that you got more cores than you know what to do with 5950x that's another thing if you go for Threadripper yeah you're not going to use well 24 cores, 32 cores, even 64 cores most of the time even if you do productivity optimum optimum number of cores at this point in time is probably still around 8 cores so you'd rather have an 8 core with a high clock speed than say 16 core with a lower clock speed so 8 cores optimum and then you could probably go 12 core for overkill and 16 core will be future proofing so a 5950x should be future proof for a good five years if you can get the 
five gigahertz clock speed on it which you should be able to anyway let's cut this video short although I'm gonna ramble on it's not gonna be long now and we're gonna get 15 to 20 percent IPC increases and 200 megahertz boost on the clocks so I was right on the clocks when I did my original video in early May I was wrong on the cores they're not gonna well if you think about it they're not gonna outcompete thread rippers are they yeah so they're not gonna change the cores that was just wishful thinking anyway do remember to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video